everyone and welcome! I'm Vasco from the Angular University and in this lesson we are going to learn when should we use template-driven versus model-driven or reactive forms and why. It's coming right up. Let's give an example. For example, this is a model-driven form. So all the validations and all the controls are defined programmatically and we are just binding those controls to the template using, for example, form control name and the form group directives. Now, what we haven't done so far is that we can actually combine model-driven forms and template-driven forms in the same form. For example, the mandatory validation for the title field. We can delete it here from the programmatic declaration, so it's no longer defined in a model-driven way, but we can go now to the form itself and we can add the required attribute and this will still work. Let's give it a try. If we clear the title mandatory field we can see that the validation is triggered. So this proves that we can use both mechanisms of form building together. But you can see even from this simple example how things can start becoming confusing rather fast if we mix the two approaches in the same form. So we are best off choosing one approach and using it consistently through the whole application. There might be cases where we need to mix the two approaches, but those tend to be the exception and not the rule. But then, what type of form should we choose and why? That actually depends on the concrete situation. For example, if you are migrating an existing application from Angular 1 to Angular 2, you really want to go with template-driven forms, at least in an early stage. That's one of the main use cases of template-driven forms, actually. It makes it very easy to migrate existing Angular 1 forms built using ng-model to Angular 2 forms that also use ng-model and the banana box syntax and bidirectional binding. That's really one of the main use cases. Now, if you have a simple form in an Angular 2 application, it only takes a couple of fields, like three or four fields, and it only uses very basic validation, like these fields are mandatory, this field only has this minimum length. In such a simple use case, you can also use template-driven forms. They work perfectly. There is no reason to not use them. But model-driven forms were built to handle cases where the complexity increases, like for example, enterprise applications. Imagine a very large CRUD application with large forms that span multiple tabs, with a ton of fields, a lot of business logic validation, so for example, certain fields cannot have this combination of values. That's the clear scenario for using model-driven forms from the beginning. Also, if you have an application where you want to add a more modern functionality like autosave or undo-redo, you will find it much easier to add that sort of functionality if you use reactive forms from the beginning. And remember, template-driven forms and model-driven forms are using under the hood exactly the same mechanisms. That means that for both, you will have a form group representing the form and you will have form controls representing the individual controls. So under the hood, they work exactly the same way. This also means that there is nothing that you can do with template-driven forms that you could not do with model-driven forms and vice versa. But we can see that certain features are really simple to implement using model-driven forms. Things like autosave complex interfield validations. Those come much more natural using model-driven forms. I hope this has helped you decide which type of forms to choose for your application. In the next lesson, we are going to see both form types in action in the exercise of the forms course.